Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. And what a glorious morning to celebrate. Whether you are here with us together, whether you are watching remotely, Christ is with us, goes before us, and invites us to worship. Let us now gather our hearts, our minds, in awe of this miracle of God's salvation as we prepare to worship our almighty God. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. The meditation today comes from Psalm uh, chapter 118. It reads, The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now let us stand as you are able and come together in our call to worship. And on this glorious Easter morning, I tell you, out of the darkness of grief and despair comes a message of hope. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We run to the tomb to see for ourselves, and it is true. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We hear a voice call our name, and we know our risen Lord is with us now and always. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let us pray. God of all our days, we come this morning with eager anticipation. We seek to know you, to see you, to touch you. Open our hearts that we might experience you anew. Open our lives that we may be faithful witnesses to your resurrection. May we, with shouts of joy, proclaim your steadfast, liberating love to all people everywhere. Amen. Our opening hymn today can be found on page 302, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. We'll, we'll sing verses 1 through 4.
You may be seated. And now let us bow before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Oh, dear Lord and Heavenly Father, it is in awe that we come before you this morning. We pause once again in the miracle of the resurrection of your Son from the dead. This is a miracle we cannot understand, we cannot comprehend, but we know that you sent Christ into the world to walk the earth, to show us how we should live, and to teach us that you love and are willing to forgive us if we repent and turn to you and seek your guidance, accepting your promise of eternal life. We sing, Soar We Now, Where Christ Has Led. But in reality, Lord, we face a world that is faltering, a world where the only thing that seems to be soaring these days is pain and loss. So many deaths to gun violence that we can't keep track. Storms and tornadoes that tear apart homes and families and churches and towns and leave us shocked and stunned in their wake. A war in Ukraine that we cannot comprehend, but can only put into your hands that you would bless and speak to the leaders of our free world, that while we may not agree on how to worship you or where to worship you, we do agree that your goal for your people is peace, that the lion and the lamb will lie down together, and that no child of yours will suffer injustice, loss, or pain at the hands of another person. We are so humble at the work to be done in the world, but at the same time, we watch how Jesus did it how he walked up to each person and reached out to each person, sinner and saint and hurting soul alike, and welcomed them by looking into their eyes. May we learn to do the same. May we learn to be patient. May we learn to be forgiving, accepting, but also never stopping to call out injustice immorality and wrongdoing. And may we learn to do it in the simplest of ways in every step of our lives every day, because those steps begin with you. And we admit humbly, O oh Lord, that often our first thought is not to turn to you, that our first thought is to get even, our first thought is to withdraw and nurse our hurts, our first thought is to give in to, it's too much, Lord, I can't do it. But then we also know that you don't believe in the word can't, and that you will show us and you will lead us. Let us embrace this as a day of new beginnings. Let us walk from this sanctuary today into the newness of life, the way the disciples went forward, halting, afraid, uncertain, but they went forward even in the wake of Christ's crucifixion because he had said, lo, I will be with you even until the end of the age. And we claim that promise for ourselves humbly today. We praise your holy name as we rest in the beauty of the resurrection and we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And hear now these words of assurance. Come into the light of God's love. Christ is risen. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Know beyond all doubt that God's love is always with you, surrounding you, leading you, 
and comforting you. Be at peace. Amen. And God indeed has been gracious to us in the gift of his Son given for our salvation. And now is our time in our worship when we come together to bring back to God a portion of that God has given us for the work of his kingdom. Let us receive our morning tithes and offerings. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, on this day when we celebrate the greatest gift ever given, your Son, Jesus Christ, we humbly bow before you to bring our gifts because we want the whole world to know this good news. Bless these gifts on their way. Bless each giver. Bless each person unable to give. But above all, bless us to your service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now will you please remain standing and join me in this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and the children may go with Chris and Linda for extended church. The New Testament lesson today comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. It can be found on page 1824 in the Pew Bible. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country, of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. 
But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And the epistle lesson is from Corinthians chapter 15, verses 26, and that can be found on page 1788. If only for his life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death became through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to, de to be destroyed is death. Are you ready to praise God for the gifts we've been given? Let us stand in awe as we sing together. Let's begin this morning with number 176, Majesty, which is in your hymnal. I'm going to ask Jesse to play it through once, and then we're going to sing it once. Let's sing this in awe and respect for our Lord. Okay.
and he is Lord, number 177. God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And now I'm going to ask you to rise again for the reading of the gospel. And our gospel lesson this morning comes in our continued study of the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. These may be words that we think we know, but let's listen to them with new ears. Luke 12, 24, 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners to be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves, and he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. may be seated. Isn't it a beautiful morning this morning? The sun is shining. It's a little cool, but it's fresh, refreshing. But you know, even if it were one of those weird Easter snow squalls that we've had in the past, it still would be a beautiful morning. Because we come again to hear the words of promise and the words of the resurrection. But we've got to hear those words where we are right now in our lives. Because the way we hear them today may be different from the way we heard them last year or even years before. Because life has a way of moving on and life has a way of not being able to stop. And so we need to come with the women to the tomb again this morning. We have a group that gets together on Wednesday nights. It's a group that's been getting together for some time. Some of the members are from this community. Uh, others live uh, a distance away, but they come in on Zoom so that we're either together next door or watching each other on Zoom. And we just come to talk about what we're dealing with and how we can, by sharing our experiences, help each other deal with and heal from some of the things that life has thrown at us. And we sometimes often begin these meetings, I will say to people, so how are you arriving tonight? 
you today, this morning, have come, you drove, parked your car, some people even walked, and how are you? Where is your soul? How are you arriving on this Easter morning? You might be arriving with being relaxed, having had a week off. I, I've had fun watching Facebook this week, for, especially for our Sunrise teachers who work in our day school and work so hard, seeing that they've had time to go to the beach with their families, to watch their families play baseball, their children to do things, to cook together. Oh, these are joyous things that refresh our souls. And, but I've also seen and heard people who are coming in this morning with a bit of weariness, coming to celebrate the first Easter without a loved one and still dealing with all that tangled ball of emotions when someone leaves us, and especially when they leave us unexpectedly. Or we're coming in with anxiety over surgery or hospitalizations or waiting for doctor's notes, but this is a slice of time, a moment in time. So stop to think, how are you arriving? I usually ask, and if we were in a smaller group, I would get you to respond. Give me one word. How are you arriving? Exhilarated, joyful, tired, stressed, frightened, worried. Bring that this morning. And then let's go back in time. Because after all, we read the story, and we know Easter is here, and we know how the story ends. But let's go back in time. Put yourselves in the place of those women on that first Easter morning. Now, much is made of the fact that the disciples are in hiding. Well, wouldn't you be? Because they have just suffered the worst shock of their lives. They have given up their lives to follow this man, Jesus. They saw him come triumphantly. We saw it here last week, triumphantly, into Jerusalem. And they think, oh boy, this is it. This is it. This is the time Jesus is going to pull out the sword. He's going to wipe out the Romans. He's going to tell us how to wage battle. And no, that's not why Jesus is here. But then again, we know the end of the story. They didn't. All they know is they're frightened for their lives because their king, that they gave up everything to follow, has been taken away, crucified, dead, and buried. And are the Romans coming after them next? And we even explored it a little bit this morning, talking in the confirmation class, asking what would have happened if the Romans had taken out all of the disciples? Well, you know God would have found God's way to bring this good news to the world. And they were perhaps protected by their fear because it withdrew them into a time where God could begin to work with them. And so it went to the women to come to the tomb because the women would not be suspected by the Roman authorities. The Roman authorities didn't understand Jewish burial rituals anyway. So they were not concerned about, oh, let the women go do what they've got to do. Uh, but it was to the women that the miracle was revealed. And I actually saw something posted in one of my uh, clergy forums this week, tongue-in-cheek, of course, saying, on Easter morning, if we're going to be accurate, all the sermons have to be preached by women because they were the first to the tomb. But they were the ones that God could use at that moment. And so think of what you would feel if you were one of those women walking to the tomb. Of course, they were in sorrow. Of course, with a shock and a pain of what they had just seen and witnessed, because they were there. They were at the foot of the cross. They saw it all, in all its horror. But they're going to do what they have to do, as painful as it's going to be. And of course, what is the first thing that we're told here? They went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They knew what they had to do but they found the stone had been rolled away. And that is our first message of this Easter morning. The stone was rolled away. How do we come to this point, this day, this time, when the stone that we perceive blocking us from our lives, our salvation, our lives ahead, take it as a fact, that stone is rolled away. They did not know what they were going to encounter, but they saw that the stone had been rolled away. And they went in 
And how many times do we go the next step in our lives thinking we know what it is we need to do, what it is that God needs us to do, and we get a total surprise. They didn't need their burial spices after all. They were ready. But Jesus was not there. He was gone. And of course they were frightened. Of course they didn't understand what was going on. But then they went back because the angels that were there reminded them that Jesus himself had said to them, he told you back in Galilee that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful people and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Which means the women had all been very much an important part of all of Jesus' teachings. And did they look at each other and say, oh yes, right, this is what he meant. And there are many times that we have in our lives, we need to go back to the scriptures. We need to go back to the testimony of other people. We need to go back to each other's witness and we say, aha, I've heard that story before. Ah, deep sigh of relief. I don't know what's coming next, but I know I can go on because the stone is rolled away. And so they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples. And the story sounded like nonsense to the men. So they didn't believe it. But Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. He peered in, he saw the empty linen wrappings, and then he went to go home again because he didn't understand what had happened. And it was one thing for Jesus to tell them this, but another thing to see it in reality because Peter isn't sure what this means. Now what? Everything that he thought he knew has been blown out of the water. If Christ isn't here, where is he? But see the transformation that Peter underwent as we get to our reading from Acts this morning. Only a few years after this, Peter, who was hiding in fear, has now, through the coming of the Holy Spirit and the witness and seeing the risen Christ and being with him, he is able to stand up and say, God shows no favoritism. You are all welcome if you accept the message. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. Isn't that a total turnaround from the Peter that ran frightened from the tomb? But if we give God time to work and show us what God has in mind, it's amazing what we can do. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Can you imagine frightened Peter now with the Holy Spirit's empowerment, having the courage to deliver this good news to the entire world. And how might God be calling you to do that very thing? How indeed? For as we read this morning, coming out of Corinthians, the 15th chapter, looking at at from verse 19 on, as Kevin read to us this morning, in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first great great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Indeed, the king has come, the king is waiting, and when however you arrived this morning, whether in joy, in peace, in sorrow, in pain, in trepidation, in anxiety, name that spot where you are and give it to God so that when you walk out of the door in the triumph of the risen Christ this morning, there is indeed a new beginning and a new life and a new world. Let us celebrate that new beginning with our closing hymn. Let's stand.
So as you go from this place this morning, how are you leaving? How is your spirit as you go? And may God carry you forth, because our God is making all things new. And as you go, take this benediction with you. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit walk with you, comfort and inspire you, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated. Thank you.